Okay, so this is my third uh, radiation appointment. Uh, they're, they are radiating the spot in my leg and it has minimal um, side effects because of where it's at, it's not going through any major, major organs. So it's really just a skin rash and, um, and fatigue, which fatigue is like the number one side effect of melanoma. So that's just fatigue squared. It's fine. Um, it has made me a little tired, but it's, like I said, it's not like I'm not already tired, so it's okay. Isn't every mom tired? Um, so uh, it hasn't been too bad. The The rough part was I met with the, doc, the oncology radiologist the first day, and he made sure I was aware at three different points in the conversation that this therapy is not to prolong life. It is only to help so the tumor doesn't take over the muscles in my leg and immobilize me. And um, after being told that three times, I was a little disheartened and I got a little teary-eyed and he got frustrated with me and thought that I needed to quickly go talk to a counselor and asked if I had help and I was like I think it's reasonable and prudent for me to have be a little teary-eyed when I've just been told several times that like nothing you're gonna do for me is gonna prolong life um having said that it's okay like he's not in charge of my life and he's not in charge of like how long I get to be on the earth so God is and that was predetermined before I came here. I found in a scripture today when I was reading that, I flipped to this scripture and just even on my phone and it um, said that God knew all of our dates and that essentially that's like a paraphrase, but I was like, you know, they can tell me whatever they want, but I'm the one who discovered the tumor in my side because God told me to like has shown me like here's a spot I'm the one who found the like one I feel like there might be one in my back and so it is moving so I'm hoping maybe it's related to my surgery because my surgery site um I physically and literally busted a gut last laughing on Friday <laughs> and so it filled the surgery site with fluid mm -hmm. <laughs> So here we are, like she might have to drain it. I can call today if I want it drained, but it's pretty like globby. Like you can just touch it. I freaked Darren out. He was like, that's disgusting. <laughs> and I showed a friend and she was like, gross. And my kids were like, yuck. But you can feel all the fluid just trapped under the skin. And so um, she said it was not a big deal. It will repair itself, but I probably just busted a gut laughing and pulled out some stitches in between muscles and so yeah there's that um so the plan is to get in with my oncologist see if it, I have any other systemic um options and then also get a pet scan to see if there's other things going on um I'm trying something natural on top of it and maybe that will help but like I said, I have faith in God's timing and God's plan for us. And well, the journey continues. And I hope I don't tick too many people off along the way because I just have learned that I am the only one who goes home with myself. And so I'm my only advocate. So um, with COVID, I, well, I have a friend that comes with me who's amazing, but, um, and if Darren wasn't working, he could too, but. I'm the only one who can push for a PET scan or make sure that I don't get fallen between the cracks. Cause like, honestly, when I'm not in active therapy, I've never heard from cancer units. They don't, can't, any of my doctors, no one checks, no one makes sure that I'm scheduled for everything I need to be scheduled for. I was supposed to have a port flush like every six weeks. They got canceled. They, they just, didn't even check in and I had said before I left hey I think I need a port flush and three months went by and I didn't hear from anybody so I am my only advocate and I am afraid sometimes people like just get so wrapped up in just getting their paycheck and coming in and 
you're just number 999 for the day and they don't they forget to realize that we're humans and that each one of us has a life and I I told them I said hey it would be fine if I was a 95 year old lady and I lived this glorious wonderful life I would be like sweet this is so good you're not prolonging my life hallelujah <laughs> um, just get me out of pain you know or whatever but I my story is different. I am a mom of six kids and I'm fighting for my kids and for my husband and I'll keep fighting regardless of the negative um, phrases and patronization that comes my way.